Hello, my friends. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God, the Spirit which guided the Lord Jesus Christ for all His life, His ministry, be with you to guide your mind, your intellect, your reasoning for you to not allow yourself to be taken by the evil spirit which leads the heart to deceit, which leads the heart to the vanities of this world and leads the heart to lusts and desires which are of iniquity, which lead the heart to injustices. May the Holy Spirit come and guide your mind. Of course, only with the mind of God can this, can it really be guided by to a life of quality. May this happen with you in the name of the Lord Jesus. More than anything, more than healing, more than prosperity, more than your family, more than your friends, more than the world, more than the world. May your mind be an instrument of the Holy Spirit or have the essence of God that you may know how to lead yourself in this filthy and dirty and ill-charactered and disgraceful world. It's disgraced. It's a shame. It's condemned. And those who follow the spirit of this world will also be disgraced for all eternity. As for us, we continue here to plant the word of God, the word which brings life. Speaking of the word, look, pay attention. The scripture which we will read, you will find it in the book of John. John chapter 1, verse 1. It reads, In the beginning was the word. In some translations, it says, in the beginning it was the verb. And the word, you know, they get confused by this. What is important to understand is that in the beginning, it was the word, the verb. And the word was with God. And the word was God. This is glorious. The word was God. Praise God. Look, my friend. And the word made the flesh. Meaning the word was materialized and lived amongst us. Jesus is the word, the verb, the living word. Then, when a person is attached to the word, when a person is supported by the word of God, the sacred scriptures, when they support their faith on the sacred scriptures, the sacred scriptures will support them in the moments of tribulation, anguish, and desperation. But if a person does not support his mind, his intellect, his faith, his spirit, in the word of God, if he does not support himself in the word of God, certainly, 
He will not have the support of the word of God to obtain benefits. So, my friend, when the Apostle Paul speaks and says that we have the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit, is the Word. We have it. All of us have access to the Word. Of course, not all have the mind of the Lord Jesus, but all have access to the mind of the Lord Jesus when they read the Bible. At times you see, for example, testimonies which we have shown. People who were confined to solitary in prison and they found an old and torn Bible. And they started to read. They had nothing to do. There was nothing, nothing, nothing to do. They were alone there. They got the Bible, started to read and got converted and then they left to a new life. Because the mind of God was absorbed by the mind of that prisoner and he applied the knowledge. He exercised the knowledge which he had in the word of God, the mind of God, and God set him free. That is why Jesus said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. For this, because the truth is the word. The truth is the mind of God. When you have access to the mind of God, then you have access to the truth. Now it's not enough for you to have knowledge of the mind of God, the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not enough for you to have information of the Word of God. You have to support your faith in it, in the Word, so that the Word may support your life. It's so glorious. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those of you who understand Portuguese, English, who understand my language, those of you who listen in Spanish, in the Spanish language, I try to speak very calmly for you to understand my words. But I'm sure that the Holy Spirit clarifies it better. I am sure that He enlightens your understanding for you to understand me, the word which we teach, which is the Word of God. So then you see the difference when a person has the mind of the Lord Jesus. He doesn't give up in his journey of faith. He never gives up. Do you know why they don't give up? Because they have the mind of Christ. They apply, they support themselves in the mind of Jesus, in the Word of God. They don't support themselves in an instrument which is the pastor, the assistant, the bishop, Bishop Messer, whoever it may be, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the instrument, the jar of clay. What matters is the content which the jar is transmitting. So when you see a pastor an evangelist, a preacher who fell in temptation, abandoned faith, they had their hands in the plow and perhaps they looked back. If you are a person, we could say foolish, you will want to know, your curiosity will lead you to want to know why did he leave? What was the reason why he left? So you start to follow the social medias of those elements. Those elements, that element which rebelled, 
who left not me, not the church, because the church remains. But they left the word, the word which gave them support on the altar. This word was abandoned. But the foolish fall into the foolishness, the ignorance, the disgrace of following that bad element in their social media. And then that bad element used by the mind of the devil starts to throw doubt in regards to the work of God, in regards to the pastors, about me. It doesn't matter. And I'm not bothered. They can say whatever they want because I'm not bothered. I'm not trying to defend myself. No, none of this. I'm trying to defend your faith. I'm trying to give you weapons to defend your faith. Because from the moment which Adam and Eve gave ears to the voice of the devil, from the moment where Eve gave ears to the voice of the devil, look at how the world is. They disobeyed God. While they were walking according to the mind of God, they did not just have communion with God, but they had peace. But this moment, this exact instance, you who are watching me, you who were of faith, you were once supported in the word of God, but you saw your pastor, your bishop, your the assistant, the person who fell, who left the work of God. You wanted to follow their footsteps. You wanted to know why did they leave. Your curiosity, which is cursed, for trying to know why they fell. And what does this have to do with your life? What does this have to do with you? Take care of your life. Take care of your faith. Take care of yourself. Save your soul. And don't keep falling after the fallen. Imagine they're in heaven. When Lucifer rebelled against God, he managed to gather a third of the angels and took them with him. Look at what they're living today, a piece of hell. Why? Because they followed the steps of Lucifer. They became, from angels, they became demons. From servants of God, messengers of God, they became demons, messengers of the devil. And the devil continues in the same work manner because he does this with humans. He brings down a person, brings down because a person or the person wanted to be brought down because they did not give ears to the mind of the Lord Jesus. They deviated their faith from the word of God. They looked back. They had their hands on the plow. They were going well. But all of a sudden, they looked aside. They looked back. That's it. The plow caught a stone and it left their hands and etc. And the person hurt themselves. My friend, be intelligent. Be rational. Don't be a fool to follow social media of those who are empty, disturbed, fallen. Please, do good to yourself. Do good to yourself. If they rejected to support their faith in the word of God and the mind of Jesus, you're going to follow these people. You're going to follow this person. Oh, but I want to know why did they leave? Why, 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 why? Ah, come on. Stop trying to be a know-it-all. Stop trying to be a follower. Stop being gullible. So, I would like that you would use just a bit, just a bit of your intelligence. Who knows? A bit of your intelligence would open your eyes to what is right. That you may see what is right. 
and you don't follow what is wrong. Because those who have the mind of the Lord Jesus are not worried with the others as how it happened, the gossip, the spiritual gossip. For you to have an idea, there was an element who had a horrible fall. He fell. He fell badly. But this element opened a page on the social media and he put there a lot of things against us, against the church, against me and character. And and amongst the fallen, there were two young, 22, 23, 24, around there, two young men who were in the work, they were following Jesus, they were surrendering their lives, they were being prepared to serve the Lord Jesus. And these two started to follow the steps of this element who left, this bad element who left, this bad example who left. Do you know what happened to them? They fell into depression and they hung themselves. They hung themselves. They killed themselves. They knew the word of God. Yes, they knew. But why did they hang themselves? They hung themselves because they they let go of the, the plow. They lost the vision of the mind of God, the word of God which brings life, and they started to look to the fallen or to that element who has fallen. This is not intelligent. This is foolishness. This is stupidity. And it was fatal, lethal, because they stopped following the word of God. I have spoken here and I'm going to tell you, I don't want that you follow me. I don't want you to follow me, Bishop Macedo nor the un the institution of the universal church of the kingdom of God. I want you to follow the word because if you follow me or the church or whoever it may be within the church, you will hurt yourself because there's no way. It's not wise. I remember when I started in faith, I saw scandals in the church. I saw horrible things. But I did not want to know about them. My faith was not supported on men, on the pastor of the church, on the institution. My faith was not supported on the integrity of a human being. No, my faith was supported on the word of God. That is why the scripture says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. If you take your focus away, you deviate your mind from the word of God, you will fall. You won't make it to the end. You will lose yourself. You will go to hell. And after hell, you go to judgment. And after judgment, you go to the lake of fire and brimstone, which is the worst than hell. So be rational, be intelligent. You don't need to be wise. You don't need to have diplomas. You don't need to have studied. You don't need to know how to read or write to understand this. You just need to think a bit because God gave you intelligence. So when we follow the mind of the Lord Jesus, we don't follow the mind of men. Be it a big or small man, doesn't matter. We follow the word of God. Our, wor our lives are supported on the word of God, based on the word of God. I was talking to Bishop Gonsalves, who was listening to me this moment. God bless you, Bishop Gonsalves. Bishop Gonsalves is there in Angola. Prisoner of a system. He's alone. 
more than a year. Without being able to move because of the politics, because of the system, the political system in that country. But he, who supports Bish, uh, Bishop Gonçalves, Bishop Gonçalves, who is supporting you? You don't have a church. You don't go to church. Who is supporting you in this moment of difficulty? The one who sustained you is the one who called you. He sustains you with his word. And his word makes you strong, resistant, unbeatable, unshakable. Because it's as Paul says, Who can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus? Who? Who? Challenges, difficulties, death. Who can separate us? Is it the cold? Is it the sword? Is it this or that? There is nothing and no one because we are firmed on the word of God. And the devil works with the word of lie. He works with the word of deceit. He knows that mankind is foolishly but foolishly and very curious. Very curious. Very curious. Because they are very curious and they hurt themselves. So my friend, don't be curious to see why Lucifer rebelled against God. Why he fell. Don't look for Lucifer. Let me see what Lucifer will say there in heaven. Let me see what happened there. It doesn't matter you. Are you going to follow Lucifer? Are you going to follow the devil to know what happened in heaven? What was the injustice which he was a victim of? It's foolishness. It's stupidity. In the least, it is extremely foolish, ignorant, spiritually speaking. Don't chase after the fallen. Don't follow the fallen and neither those who are standing because those who are in, those who are standing have to take care that they don't fall. Follow the word. The word which is living, which is spirit, which is the mind of God. This is clear. I get angry. I get revolted of how ignorant are those who follow the fallen, the weakened, the destroyed. Do you want to know why so-and-so left his wife? Do you want to know why they separated? So you're going to follow that guy because trying to find out why did he leave? What does this matter to you? What will this help you with? What does it matter to you to know why Satan left heaven? He lost his glory. What does it matter to you? Will it add something to your life? Will you gain a prize because of this for knowing? It won't help with anything but the Word of God. The Word of God in you, incarnated in you, which is Jesus, the mind, the divine mind in your mind will make your heart have direction, the right direction that you may not fall in temptation, that you may not come and marry in the wrong way, that you may not come and choose and make bad choices, that you have a life of peace with God. Because once you preserve the mind of Jesus in you, you're going to live in peace. These two youth who killed themselves, they shame. You know, it's over. There's no way. Perhaps you are curious to know, but Bishop, after what happens after they die and they go to hell? I don't know and neither do I want to know. Neither will I tell you because if I knew, I wouldn't say anything. Because it doesn't matter to you. What matters is what awaits those who maintain themselves in the mind of the Lord Jesus, with the mind of the Lord Jesus, with the Word of God. As the Word of God created everything which is God, when we absorb His Word, when we drink of His Word, 
when we support our lives, base our lives on His Word, then we are supported by the Word. And this is happening with Bishop Gonsalves. He is reading there the book of Job and learning with Job what is to be patient, to have perseverance. Praise God! When he comes back, when he gets out of there, he's going to break through. He is going to break through. Why? Because he's going through an experience which only he and God knows. So, my friend, be intelligent. Don't follow the weak. Don't look to see what happened with them, why they left, because this won't add anything to your life. But on the contrary, it will reduce your faith because once a person places his hands on the plow, placing the hands on the plow means the following. You're looking at the Word of God. You're following the Word of God. Then you start to hear the word of the devil, the voice of the devil, the voice of these intruders which are in this world, these scabs in the world. If you start to hear these people, you're going to hell with them as well. That's the reality. So, open your understanding. The word made everything. The mind of the Lord Jesus makes flesh in us. Jesus materializes in us. I'm speaking in the spiritual language. When a person believes in the Word of God, they surrender to the Word. They depend on this Word. This Word will never leave them at any point in time abandoned. Because in this moment, Bishop Gonsalves knows very well who sustains, and it's the Word. They are sustained by the Word, the Word of God, which he embraced the first time he heard the Word. So the Word of God was incarnated in him. It's incarnated in him. He has the mind of God. And because of this, he is sustained, strengthened. That is why the great heroes of faith were born, which you see in the sacred scriptures. They were supported by the Word. And the Word also supported them. The Word protected. The Word sustained. Those who supported them. And it's the case of Jesus in his temptations. In his temptation, Jesus answered Satan saying, It is written, meaning the word. It is written. It's over. It doesn't matter if it's written and I will think and I will absorb, if it's what I will eat or drink or what I will sleep with or live. And he overcame Satan because he used the power of the word the power of the word. You, who are here, perhaps fallen by any situation, the word is the solution. Run to the word, read the word, drink off the word, absorb the word, eat the word, digest the word, because the word will sustain you. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you with this word. May it awaken your understanding that you may survive in this disgraceful world. That's the reality. My friend, We are going to enter the fast of Daniel on the 1st of August. The 1st of August. And together with this faith, we 
we will seek the formation of the mind of God in you. We will seek to raise you up, to sustain your mind in that which God has given to us. We're going to continue speaking, preaching, planting the word of life. So, 21 days of fast of Daniel, 21 days of seeking of the mind. You will dive your mind in the mind of God. You will see what will happen to your life. You will make a turnaround in your life. You will make a turnaround through everything you've gone through and you'll be honored by God. And you will forget the bad days which you lived till today because you will receive the mind of the Most High. God bless you till tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.